Hey there, YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable, coming at you yet again with more video content. Uh, today, we're gonna talk more about, not so much about terminating anything, it's more about what you need to have on the job with you. What's, what items should you have in your toolkit? And as it turns out, we actually happen to have a print and go checklist on our website in the Cable Academy, where you can just simply print it out check off the things that you need, and then gather them up. But I think it behooves us to talk about some of these tools and some of the things that we offer so that you know what to put on your checklist for what. Be right back. Don't go away. Hi, this is Dave from Two Cable. Uh, here to talk about some of the tools you're going to need to uh, do this kind of installation work. What kind of installation work? Well permanently installing cable into your home or business. We're starting in terms of importance. Let's talk about safety. Don't have a pair of safety glasses here, but safety glasses are always needed. Heavy duty work boots, especially if you're at a construction site. Um, also, if you're at a construction site, you'll need high visibility uh, clothing. Another thing you'll need is a good pair of gloves. Uh, these come in handy for some of the termination work we do, but they're just generally good for your hands because uh, I don't know if you notice or not, but these say cut level one on them. Now that doesn't mean that these will protect you from any kind of blade, but if you've ever noticed coming home from work at night and you've got little nicks all over your hands, these will really help with this. In general, you need to be able to measure, so measuring tape is good. You need to be able to cut things, especially if you need to get things out of boxes, so razor knife comes in handy. This is a drywall saw, sometimes called a keyhole saw, um, or a jab saw. It's good for cutting holes in wallboard, for installing uh, jacks and wall plates. You don't want your jack or your wall plate or anything else to be at an angle on your wall, so if you don't have one of these, this level will help make sure things are level and plumb. Another thing really handy is a whole set of screwdrivers. If you don't have a whole set of screwdrivers, this is a good investment. An all-in-one screwdriver that has most of the bits you'll run into, certainly all the bits, tips that you'll need for doing this kind of work. Also, drill comes in handy. This one now has a uh, Phillips head end on it for driving screws, um, but you'll also want to make sure you have a nice little set of drill bits. Also, if you're working on the wall, you need to know where things are behind the wall, especially studs. You don't want to take your keyhole saw and cut into a wooden stud, that's not going to work. So a stud finder comes in really handy. Stud finder will tell you where the studs are behind the wall board so that you can uh, avoid them when you're cutting holes in the wall. Okay, now this is not really intended to be pull string, but it works really good as a pull string. Um, you can tie a weight on this and drop it down inside the wall and know that it's going to be perpendicular. You can also uh, use this to tie onto cable and if it's already been inserted into the conduit you can go to the other end and pull on the string and uh, pull the cable through. So those are general tools that you'll want to use. Uh, I say general tools because they're not just useful for doing this kind of work. They're useful for doing all kinds of work around your home, and if you're going to be doing work in your home, you need to invest in those. Let's talk a little bit now about specific tools. And what I mean by specific is tools that are specifically for installing cable. First of all, a pair of flush cutters is required. And flush cutters are, are like diagonal pliers, 
except that they don't have a bevel here. They have a flush edge, and so you can cut right up to a surface and have nothing left over. I mean, it cuts wires off right at the surface. Speaking of cutting wires off, sometimes you just need to cut a wire off. Wire cutters are, are very handy. These are great because they encircle the wire as you cut it, and so it takes a lot less force to cut through the wire than it would with, say, uh, diagonal cutters. Still speaking of cutting, these do a really good job of cutting cable right here. This is our cut and strip tool and uh, has a little blade that'll cut cable right off. So that's cutting, now crimping. This is a, a ground cripper. Um, some of our uh, RJ45 terminals have an external ground that has to wrap around um, the cable jacket and this does, whoops, a really good job of crimping those closed uh, and remaining neat and uh, symmetrical. This tool also contains a ground crimper. This is our all-in-one termination tool. Um, it's good for a stripping cable, uh, as I said, the external ground, and it also crimps RJ45 connectors onto the cable end. And um, it's also good for pass-through, because it has a little blade that cuts the conductors off flush with the end of the connector. So this is pretty much all you need if you're putting on crimp on RJ45 connectors. If you're going to be using our uh, keystone jacks, you want some parallel, parallel uh, crimp pliers. These make sure that the force is applied in parallel to each other uh, so that the uh, terminal end is not malformed during the termination process. And while we're talking about termination, if you have a keystone jack that is made to be punched down, it gets old pretty quickly using a punch down tool to punch in all eight of those individual connect conductors. It goes a lot faster if you just lace each conductor into the slot and then punch them down all eight at once and cut off the extra wire. So this is a big time saver if you're using punch down, jack, punch down jacks. What about some of these individual parts that we need to be prepared to use? These keystone jacks are made to snap into a wall plate on one end. On the other end, they can snap in either to another wall plate or a patch panel. And these patch panels are made to accept uh, these keystone jacks and they just snap into place. You'll also run into a need for patch cables. Patch cable plugs into the jack and then into the switch on this end or into the jack on the device end and then into the device. We usually talk about a rack to jack installation and that's what we're talking about a permanent link that runs from a, a patch panel on one end to a wall plate on the other end jack to jack and uh, and a uh, patch cable on each end speaking of ends these are little pass-through rj45 connectors they are handy for uh, turning a cable into a patch cable, although not really a good, de good idea for a solid core cable. Um, but they can get you out of trouble in a pinch. But usually we want to use a uh, permanent link jack-to-jack -jack installation with factory-made uh, patch cables on each end. It's handy to have Velcro strips, especially if you have more than one cable in a run. If you're running uh, cables in a bundle, you need to tie them together. You do not want to use zip ties because they put too much force on too small an area of the cable jacket and will deform the cable jacket and possibly uh, crush the conductors inside. So these things just uh, go around a bundle and keep it tight.
and they're reusable. So if you have to go back and service it later, you don't have to cut a bunch of permanent zip ties. These are temporary and they come right on and go right off. It's good to know if the wires are in the right place. You're either gonna to terminate to the uh, 568A or 568B color sequence. It needs to be the same throughout the project. If it's not, you're gonna get wires that are crossed and they're not, they're not going to work. If you have a little tester like this, uh, this is just a little continuity tester, it will show if you have made any wiring errors, if you have a wire that's going to the wrong place. It won't tell you everything. It's possible that you have a wire that's just making intermittent connection or maybe a connection but a poor connection. This little device will show that that's a connection, but a certification device like a DSX-8000 might not like it. Also, a specific uh, thing that comes in handy are glow rods. Some people call them push rods. They're very flexible, so you can go through walls, around corners. Um, they're really great for above a suspended ceiling where you can uh, put them together and really push a cable uh, quite a distance. Now, most of you, if you're just uh, learning about this stuff, have never had an opportunity to um, run cable above a suspended ceiling. But if you ever do, and you use one of these, you'll find that every time you push along a top of the ceiling, every time you get to one of those grids, those iron grids, this will catch on it. And then you have to kind of move it around and get it over and then go to the next one. And that's a pain. So you also need a regulation tennis ball. Drill a 1 8 inch hole into your tennis ball, poke it onto the end of your glow rod. And then when you're going across the top of a uh, suspended ceiling, this thing will just bounce over those grids. And it will go a long way if it doesn't have uh, um, any big obstacles. Also, the tennis ball is good because it adds some mass and you can really make it move and then put it where you want it. That's my best presentation on the tools you're going to need for doing this kind of work. Uh, these are not all the tools that are going to come in handy. And certainly, there are many jobs where you don't need all of these tools. But the tools that we carry, the tools that we sell, are, are the ones that are specific to doing this kind of work and will really help you out.